and we uh, we welcome anyone who's visiting here today. It's always uh, it's always great to be able to um, welcome visitors and uh, and just to share the good things that the Lord has uh, done in our lives. All the people said. Um, and I wasn't going to turn here, but I'm just going to I'm just going to start here in Acts chapter ten, just to um, to let you know a little bit about who we are. If you if you are visiting, a man called Cornelius. Don't know if you've heard of him before, but Acts chapter ten verse one it says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. We got the Italian band here in uh, in Geelong Fellowship. Um, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, and gave much alms to the people. Thanks, Ryan. And prayed to God always. He was a good guy. And I'm not going to read through this um, whole story um, here today, but I suppose if you if you just flick over the page down to um, We'll go to go to verse 44. But what I want you to think about while we're just reading this and understanding a bit here we about who we are here, and you've already heard it testified here today. Um, a group of people that believe in the living God and his ability to um, move um, in our lives. Um, what, what was the phrase we heard just then in Sue's testimony about miraculous circumstances? What are your miraculous circumstances? Well, we know people who've come to the Lord, you've got miraculous circumstances where the Lord has moved in your life. But if you're visiting here today, what are your miraculous circumstances like this guy, Cornelius? Because he was a guy who was doing it his own way. And he was a good guy, prayed to God always, feared God with all his house. You know, he was a good example. All of those things, which we could assume is someone who's right with God. And yet God provided this set of miraculous circumstances that he might be amongst people who had been born again. And here it says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. There was a need for Cornelius, who had a good heart, there was a need for the Holy Ghost to go in, into his life. And that's what happened here. It says, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. And, um, and praise the Lord, that's what's happened to nearly everyone here today. And, and we see as, as we've got a heart for these things, how the Lord changes people's lives. And so we want to offer that to you here today going to see a baptism later on you too can be baptized in accordance with the word of god and um and we see that Corn cornelius in his his household were baptized and and they received the holy ghost and um and, and that's what we read in the bible about being born again that's a little bit about who we are and um and praise the lord that your miraculous circumstances lead you to be here today all the people said now where are we going to go um <clears throat> that was just my little introduction so that that doesn't count all right uh, on my time um let's turn to uh first kings chapter nine it's great last night too um there at the uh at the sports night and uh a bunch of our young people had invited friends from school and um it's uh, it's really good, you know, like just uh, on just a casual night like that, but just being involved in in what the Lord's called us to do, and we're able just to invite people in, and uh, and they can see a bit of who we are, and then as we go on, you know, we we sort of pray the Lord gives us opportunities to witness to them, and we sort of learn and and allow the Lord to do that in our life, and it's a wonderful thing. First Kings chapter nine now. There's a couple of topics in the um, in the news um, over the last little while, and um, <clears throat> sort of wanted to talk about. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to touch on both of them here today. So one of those is the Queen. 
um, that um, passed away um, just recently. And um, there's some interesting things um, in the Bible. And I just want to, I just want to touch on a couple of scriptures here. First Kings chapter nine and verse five, it says, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. As I promised to David, thy father saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. There will, in other words, there will continually be someone upon a, a descendant upon the throne. Let's um, turn over to Luke chapter one. The reference is there, there is the, um, the throne of David. I'm not going to get into the depths of this today, but I, I, I want to just, just look at a little bit of it here. Luke chapter one and verse 30, it says, and the angel said unto her, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David so there it is again we read one in first Kings chapter 9 and here in Luke chapter 1 and, and of course other references as well but he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end so what what is this this throne of David and uh and so we hear read here that Jesus is a descent descendant of David and we see the um the British monarchy that is also descendants of, of David and, um, and, and the queen there. So what's significant about the throne, even if, even if we trace back and we go back to Abraham right at the start of the Bible and what does God say to him? In thee, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Then says to Jacob, a descendant, says, out of thee, I will make a company of nations someone sitting on that throne so and and people will debate these um these sort of things um today and you know um throughout history it's it's maybe hard to trace different aspects and that sort of thing but there's something significant here if you get nothing else out of this there's something significant that there was a promise made to abraham there was a promise made to J jacob jesus was of that lineage david was of that lineage the the, the throne of david and so we read there in first Kings chapter nine, that there will be someone sitting on that throne until Jesus takes it. And um, you just sort of, you sort of look at the, even um, heard it said in the media that the queen's funeral is going to be something very significant, maybe the most watched event globally. So this is something significant, you know, is it, is it that because we're, we're talking about something that actually ties mankind to the word of God, there's something still there, whether people believe in God, there is something still that is, is connected there. And we see these threads through the Bible, you know, that um, the, the, the origins, you know, like, and, and we see the, the Commonwealth and the company of nations and these sort of promises in the Bible. Uh, one more Isaiah chapter nine. got to get your get your fingers warm today we'll flick through a few scriptures but Isaiah 9 and verse 6 it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace just reading this scripture and sort of thinking about rulers in our world and what they're known for and here it says his name shall be called wonderful counselor that's what he's known for the mighty god everlasting father prince of peace and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. And 
we're his people. We're, we're the people of the Prince of Peace, the, the people of the one called Wonderful Counselor. And I suppose that that um, is one of the things that's happened in our world lately and in the news. And I, I sort of want to transition a bit here to talk about who we are, that we are his people. And 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 yes, as, as we see the the British monarchy and and the uh, the links, the you know the the threads through the word of God, and we're living in significant times, you know, like and. But we see the examples in in um, in leadership and in and in peoples and in cultures and and I, I want to talk about who we are in this fellowship and about um, our culture. I'll just see if I can get something off my screen. Just uh, bear with me a second. Let's see if this works. So I want to go across a couple of things, and I just made a couple of dot points so it's easier to it's easier to remember them. Work. So I've just called this um, Church of God culture. And hopefully this can um, make sense. There we go. That'll do. Um, now I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, you know, revival fellowship culture, but I think Church of God culture is better. You know, we have the, a name for the sake of the being easy to to know who we are, but in a way, it doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, like it's what's important is being in in God's church. And these are things to aspire to and the things that we recognize in the word of God that we want, that God wants the church to be. And so we're able to sort of see the, the things that, um, that we aspire to, you know, and that we're prayerful about that, that um, as the Lord's called us as a body of people together, that, that we are those things. And, and just thinking about, you know, um, in the, the, the comparison about what you see on, on the TV at the moment and in the UK, you sort of see it very clearly, the love for the monarchy and, um, and being British, you know, and there's an established culture and they know who they are. Here in Australia, maybe we're not quite sure. Um, there's uh, interesting, uh, interesting things like we see at the moment where, you know, where there's tributes to the Queen and there's um, a minute silence and even at the football games because our, our finals are happening and all of those sorts of things. And um, But I think it was in the AFLW, they did it in the first game, a minute silence, and then um, they haven't done it after that because it causes upset. And, you know, sh should we be part of the Commonwealth? Should we be a republic and all of those sorts of things? And so as a country, we're a bit, uh, bit confused on those things. But it's still pretty powerful when you sort of see the, the these things before our eyes. So I just I just want to talk a bit about who who we are, and in here today. The Bible says that when we're born again, that we've been that we've been set apart, and um, we um, we're we're the people of the One who'll sit on the throne forever and there there shall be no end so i want to talk about what that looks like our, our culture culture means the the ideas the customs the social behaviors of a particular people or society like i say just hopefully get the transition here we've got british monarchy we've got the the british people and and their culture their customs and now we're talking about we are the people of the one who will sit on the throne forever and our culture and what that looks like. And I suppose just tying in the other news item is that over the last uh, few weeks, uh, we've seen um, the media grab a hold of some stories relating to, to a spirit-filled church here in Geelong and 
Um, that the reporting of the stories may or may not have an effect on how people um, view us as a as a spirit filled revival church. You know what the best thing we can do in a time like this is is to be sure of who you are. You know when 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 Jesus Christ comes to to take up his throne there will be no end and we're his people his people that's who we are and that's that's all that matters that's what we got to be sure about there's there's nothing to worry about in that of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end we're his people so our our culture it's probably a word that's been used a, a bit over the last little while, you know, what does it look like? And so that's where I want to get to here. So I've picked out a few points. It's not exhaustive at all, but I want to talk about what, what that looks like. And so there's my, uh, my dot points just to, to cover off on those four here today, just some that I, I picked out. So we'll start off with uh, preaching the gospel. If you want to turn to Mark chapter 16. who we are as the people of the one who will sit on the throne forever. There will be no end. And here it says in verse 15, it says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All the world. And that's who we are. That's who the Lord's made us to be. We go out and, and we share the good news. Turn over to Romans chapter one. Like I said, I just want to flick through a few scriptures here. Just on, uh, on preaching the gospel. And verse 15, it says, So as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, the, the, the joy in being part of the, the power of the word of God going out, many people here have experienced and, it's amazing, you know, like, I think I may, may have shared a story um, here before where I went with another brother to, to, to go to somebody's house who uh, there had been domestic violence in the house during the week, the police had been involved, and, and we just ended up at that house, They're just like the Lord, the Lord led us there, I, well, we were going there for a purpose, but you don't always choose to go to a place like that, I suppose is what I'm saying. But for one reason or another, we did end up there and, you know, we got the Bible out and um, you just see people convicted. And I, I remember months later, you know, maybe a month later, praying with this guy who was in a mess in his life and uh, turning to all sorts of things, nothing to do with God. And he he called out to God sitting down by a, a creek and we were praying there and he just burst out in tongues in the deepest bellow that just sailed down the, the valley along the creek. It was just, just this guttural bellowing of the Holy Ghost that just, it's just like it just came from within. And we have many instances where we, um, where we have those moments and praise the Lord, we've got a family here today who only in the last week has, has had a, has had a family member, um, Matilda received the Holy spirit and, and to experience being there with somebody when they receive the Holy spirit. And, and you just see the power of that. And this is the preaching of the gospel. This is our culture. This is the culture of the church of God. Let's have a look in second, second Timothy chapter two.
And we read a little bit about, once you go to scriptures on this, it's really hard to know which one's to pick. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, And the servant of the Lord, or a servant of the Lord, must not strive or be quarrelsome, but be gentle to, unto all men, apt or able to teach, patient, even with difficult people, in meekness, courtesy, gentle, gentleness, instructing those that oppose themselves, maybe in opposition to the truth if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Yeah. A servant of the Lord, it says here, that's, that's us. And that's our culture. And, and we preach the simplicity of the gospel that God has given us and the, the joy and the hope that has been put in us. We don't need to be controversial or, or theological. Um, let's turn to first Corinthians chapter nine. Um, there's many things that, you know, you can, you can argue the toss about and, and maybe even that what I've, what I've started on here today is one of those, you know, like we can, we can go into the, the depths of the throne of David and we can talk about that, but to some people that's going to be a problem in, and it's actually going to distract from, from them wanting to repent and to be saved and to, to find the living God and for him to work in their life. And so, we use wisdom in these things in how we, how we talk to people. And the, the Lord gives us that instruction. And it says here in first Corinthians chapter nine, it says, by the way, what I was talking about at the start too, can save people. So we use wisdom in these things. First Corinthians nine, chapter 20, it says, and unto the Jews, I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law to them that are without law as without law being not with law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law to the weak, became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. So what this is talking about is finding common ground with people, to listen, to listen to, to people in their lives, to find something you can talk about relating to, you know, to somebody's life, and lead to talking about the gospel, you know, that we would preach the gospel to all throughout the world. And, uh, and like I say, it doesn't need to be controversial or, or theological. You know, we use what people understand. And um, we also don't weaponize scripture. You know, that here we read before that his name is called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God. And and, you know, and, and this is what he says, you know, it's like you, you present a beautiful platter of fruit. This is all the goodness of God. You know, do you want to take some, you know, and we don't force it down, down people's throats, you know, but just to, just to give of the, the, the goodness of God and, and people respond. Um, I can see I'm going to run out of time if I get you to turn to all these scriptures. Colossians chapter four says, verse six, let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Speech be always with grace seasoned with salt. Um, so just talk, just thinking about this situation, you know, we've, we've used in, in our name, the name revival, because that's what we're about. At times like this, you know, if you feel it better to, if you're witnessing to say to say to someone we're from the Geelong Fellowship, without the other name, you know, maybe that's wise in some instances. There's no need to be fearful because, like I say, we are the ones, we we are we are the people of the one who will sit on the throne forever, you know. And so there's nothing to be fearful about. But if there's wisdom in not getting in a controversial argument that doesn't give any fruit, you know, well, well, maybe that's, maybe that's wise. Uh, Proverbs 11 verse 30 says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. Unity. Um, turn to Ephesians chapter four. So talked about preaching the gospel the the culture of the church of god and uh and here is is unity 
by the Holy Ghost. It says in verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring, another version says eager, to, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one God and father of all. Sorry, and I skipped the line. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. That's, that's who we are by the Holy Ghost. You know, the, um, just talking about endeavor, endeavoring to keep the unity of the, the spirit, the bond of peace, you know, in the flesh, sometimes we can, we can feel things and, um, and, and, and maybe it can, we can get ourselves in a bit of a knot and it could be about somebody else and, you know, all of that sort of thing. And, how amazing it is that when you allow the Lord to work in your life and, and use the Holy ghost that he's given us, how the pull to restoration is undeniable, you know, to, to, for the Lord to, to change your heart and mind, whether you are in the wrong or whether you weren't, you know, like whatever that, that is the unity by the Holy ghost. And, and here it talks about that in the church. It's who we are. It's our culture you know, and because we're, we're subject to the things of the flesh, but, but by the Holy Ghost, miraculous things can happen. And um, we'll stay there because we'll read another one from there in a minute. But Colossians 3 says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, once again, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And um, and praise the Lord to experience this and and, and to experience true unity by the, by the love of God, that, um, that you don't have to look around and see who your friends are, you know, but by the Holy Ghost, that we, we, we all have that love for each other, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And once again, it's, it's who we are, you know. Um, Ephesians 4 verse 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There, was, there are some key components here on, on how a body works really well, you know, and, and praise the Lord, I count myself um, privileged to have been a part of a fellowship where I've seen those things in action. And I see those things in action here. And, and that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. You know, some of the things, aspects of unity or, or maybe of disunity too is, is we, we don't gossip. I hate it when people gossip about me. They disgust me. Um, that's uh, um, actually we had... Um, we had a, a, a chef who used to be around here. He walked in before, but, you know, it's never any um, good when um, when chefs just, um, no, nah, I've lost it. <laughs> I tried that one before. Where, oh, Ollie, he's gone. Um, yeah, no, nah, jokes aren't my thing. Um, Ephesians 4 verse uh, 29 
it says, um, let no corrupt communication worth or, or worthless communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying or building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, uh, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So there's probably a lot in all of this and, and really I'm sort of giving an overview today of some of the aspects of who we are and, and the church of God um, culture. And, um, but hopefully there's things, hopefully there's things that you can pick up on in James chapter one, it's in verse 26. It says, if any man among you seem to be religious, it's not a word we use a lot about being religious. Um, but here uh, means something like, you know, actively carrying out beliefs or, or your faith, you know, so someone seems to be doing all the right stuff. It says, and bridleth not his tongue. He deceives his own heart. This man's re religion is vain. So there's some key things about, about unity, you know. Um, and another one is that we don't judge each other. Um, turn to Romans chapter 2. can't even look that joke up because my phone's on the screen <laughs> i'll tell you later keith <laughs> um romans 2 and verse 1 it says uh therefore thou art inexcusable o man whosoever thou art that judgest for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doest the same things but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things and thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that shall thou shall escape the judgment of God. Pretty serious scriptures, you know, that we that we read there, you know, and the thought of if ever you're gonna cast um judgment on somebody else, well, don't. <laughs> um, because you know. You can quite often be guilty of the same things and not very good at looking at yourself and and says, you know, how do you think you're going to go with the living God if you're going to judge your brother? And but rather to see Jesus Christ in each other, you know, to see that your your brother is or sister is that because God has made them new, you know, and 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 He's done a wonderful work in them. And and if you if you look, you'll see it. You know, look for the good things that that God God is doing in in somebody's life, and even to prefer one another. Philippians two verse three says, "Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other uh, better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. To prefer one another, to esteem the other better than themselves. That just like Jesus Christ did, you know, that we would actually be able to put others before ourselves, before ourselves. Um, Galatians chapter six, you want to turn there? And so in that we serve, we serve one another. This is all, all part of, part of our culture. That's what it says here in Galatians chapter six and verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let us do good. Serve. To serve one another. Did I say the right place? Galatians 6 verse 10, yeah. And so because we all, we serve one another, we serve our brothers and sisters, you know, that our culture is we don't have cliques. You know, we're not partial. We're, there's no preferential treatment you know for your your favorites 
we don't because we just all serve each other, you know, in the, in the family of God. We all, all love one another. And just back in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Once again, some key words here. We're talking about restoration. You know, we're, we're talking about the spirit of meekness, that that's how, that's how you do it. You know, when somebody's struggling, overtaken in a fault, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So be, be meek. You know, that's, that's the answer to that. Let's uh, get to these last two. So flowing on from that, because, because there's unity, there's love, there's care, there's esteeming the other better than themselves, it's a safe place and we're free to talk openly. You know, we're, we're free to talk about our walks, to talk about the good things, to talk about the struggles, whatever it is, and to overcome and to overcome together. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So like we've said, because, because we're united, brother, sister, Christ in love, in meekness, we can talk openly. We can encourage one another. We can be encouraged. We don't have to worry about those things that somebody's going to, you know, shoot you down or anything like that. And um, because it's not to, it's not to judge. It's to, it's to pray together. You know, it's to, it's to minister to one another. We read before in Ephesians four, it said, let, let no co corrupt or worthless communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Minister grace. Um, Hebrews 10. There is, uh, there's no shame in overcoming, you know, you can be transparent, you know, like in, in victory and seeing the Lord work in your life to be, to win a victory, to win a, to win a battle, no, to win a victory, you need to have a battle, you know, and, and those things that we can, we can, we can do together and we can encourage one another. And, and here it says in Hebrews 10 verse 24, and let us consider thoughtfully one another to provoke unto love and, and to good works. Once again, consider thoughtfully that we treat each other with care. You know, we read also the iron sharpeneth iron. So we, we, we understand the benefits of being able to, to rub shoulders with each other. And because, because there's that safety and there's that refuge in the church and love and care, we, we, we can be open. We, we, we don't have to hide. And, and like I say, we can pray together, we can be strengthened together, we can overcome. Um, First Thessalonians 5 says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak. There will be all different aspects that we deal with from time to time. But consider thoughtfully, and here it says, be patient towards all men. This is who we are. Last one, serving. So these are the traits of the people who follow the one who will take up the throne forever. It's, it's him who we serve. And uh, turn, turn to Mark chapter 10. And verse 43. says um just sort of reading on there from so shall it not be among you it says but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister 
And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And what better example than, than we have than the servant king, you know, that, that he came to serve. Um, Hebrews 9 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And actually, anything that isn't serving the living God, you know, is 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 dead works and you know that that we would um I was thinking of it even like um you know you see on tv as um at buckingham palace and the the various places around the place and and you know all the people there just wanting to be there you know and and they're just pressing the gates pressing the fence and 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 the crowd just just to see the outgoing of, of the queen and the coming of the new king and 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 just wanting to 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 be a part of it. You know, just like I just want to serve the the king at his gate at his gates. And it's the same as us, that we're not forced to to serve our king, but that we would have this desire to be at his gates in that sense, just to, to serve. Go to Psalm 100. We'll finish here. And, and praise the Lord that we, we have that, you know, as part of God's church and this culture is people that want to jump in, who want to jump in and help and they want to serve and, and just rejoicing in what the Lord's done. And I just want to be part of it. You know, it's uh, the, the desire that comes, comes by the Holy Ghost. You know, and maybe different aspects of that is, is it's not resentful. You know, that we, you know, we sing about lay up treasure in heaven from the scriptures. And, you know, if you think about the natural example is of people laying up treasure in their superannuation, you know, that, you don't see it now, but down the track somewhere you'll benefit from it. What we do in our work, walk in the Lord and how we serve, how we serve God, how we serve the church of God. And I think, I think you, you all understand that is, is how, how we, how we're there just, you know, like, like at the gates, just ready. What have you got for me today, Lord? I just want to be there for whatever you've got for me because we see the increase, the increase of his government. And that, um, you know, that, that we're not, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you can get tired and you, you, you don't see, if you don't see a reward for it or, you know, you've got a, you've got a job to do in the fellowship or whatever and someone doesn't rock up on their day and you sort of start blaming someone and this and that and whatever. You know who sees? It's God. And so in our service, there is actually, there, there is great joy. You want to have great joy because God's watching, you know, like the, that, that in, in, in serving, the nature of serving God is that he's the one who's watching and we're laying up treasure in heaven. Those, not the superannuation, this is way better. You know, and so whatever we do, we do it heartily unto the Lord. You know, because Jesus Christ is going to come and he's going to take up that throne forever and he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You know, so... So we don't have to worry. We don't have to question, you know, is this getting done? Is that getting done? And all of those sort of things, the Lord's in control, you know, and we do our best and we work together and all of those sorts of things. And it says here in Psalm 100 and verse four, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generation. 
It's the gate of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords forever. And right now we can get a taste of, of that kingdom to experience Holy Ghost culture, to experience Church of God culture. We get a taste of what it's like to be in that kingdom. And you can have a taste here today. Your miraculous circumstances that have led you here today have led you. Let, let's go to Acts chapter 2 to finish. I'm going to sneak in another one. Sorry, I know that's a lot of information today, but I just I just wanted to just go across, you know, something that's maybe been talked about for the last little while, while about culture and and what it means to be in the family of God and just to just to glean across the scriptures and to to understand what it is to be part of the Lord's the Lord's kingdom and 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 the way that he wants us to be and the way that he wants us to go out and preach the gospel and and here in Acts 2 verse 37 it says now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do I hope that's you here today is I want to be part of that kingdom what do I have to do you know I don't know what that feeling is, but something's getting me here. I want some of that. What do I have to do? And it says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Now, even linking this back to Cornelius, some, some churches will take that scripture and they'll go, then Peter said unto them, repent. Full stop. Don't read the rest. Some might say be baptized. Don't read the rest. But here we have it in scripture, men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent, be baptized, full immersion, the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. All the people said? Hand over to Pete.